I'm just gonna cut to the chase as to not waste your time, as this will be a longer video. Ranking every Undertale slash Deltarune boss slash mini boss, let's go. Uh, first, here's a brief summary of how I rank them. If you want to read it, read it. If you don't want to, don't. Number 30. Sea Round 2. Fun 2. Difficulty 1. Personality 1. Length 2. D tier. This fight is kind of a nothing fight. They just kind of throw it at you right before the end of Card Castle, but it's just the first fight, except it's quicker and easier than before. The attacks may be harder, but the fight's overall so much quicker that it doesn't really matter. C Round isn't really a character, so there's no personality present in this persistent pug. Number 29. Clover. Fun, 2. Difficulty, 2. Personality, 3. Length, 2. D tier. This fight appears basically out of nowhere in the middle of Delta in Chapter 1, and it ends almost as abruptly as it begins. All you have to do is discuss the topics to Clover's liking, and the fight ends very quickly. I do like Clover's character though, and they have three, so it's kinda hard not to like at least one of them, so they gotta put it around and see around two. Number 28. Task Manager. Fun 2, Difficulty 2, Personality 2, Length 2. G tier. Task Manager is a cool fight. Well, there's not much personality and the fight's pretty short, her attacks are really fun and cool. And they're also very unique, so that's enough reason to put it above the other two, because the other two didn't have much attack variety. Once again, there's not like much build up to this fight or anything, so not much else to discuss, so I can't put it any higher. Number 27. Toriel. Fun 2, difficulty 1, personality 3, length 3, C tier. I'll probably get made for this one, but eh. Never been a huge fan of Toriel's character in this boss fight. It doesn't do it for me for most of the duration. The attacks are easy and she'll actively avoid killing you if she can. That being said, pacifist or genocide, uh, the motion of the fight hits pretty hard at the end, so it puts her above the competitors in the lower tiers. Number 26. See round 1. Fun 3, difficulty 2, personality 1, length 3. C tier. Sea Round is a pretty fun fight, turning a joke enemy just to show that Susie's an asshole into a boss fight, and the ominous, ominous dialogue Lancer gives about it is actually pretty funny. That being said, the difficulty is lacking and the character is also lacking, and there's no characterization. It's basically not really a character, it's just a joke. So it's C tier. Number 25. Lancer. Fun 3, difficulty 1, personality 4, length 2. C tier. Lancer is the first enemy that you can even fight in Deltarune Chapter 1, and it's a pretty enjoyable fight. The bicycle he lit on fire is a pretty great bit, and it leaves a great first impression for the game as an introductory boss. That being said, it's basically impossible to fight because they die in the fight because the attacks are so easy, even if it's your first time playing one of these games. Lancer's personality makes up for the lack of gameplay in the fight. Number 24. Metaton Neo. Fun 3, difficulty 0, personality 4. Length 1. C tier. Metaton Neo is the boss of the Hotland area for the Genocide route, and it is quite a unique fight. Like on 9, Metaton takes on a new form and does something way more powerful than in his neutral route slash pacifist route. What you don't expect is the fight to take a similar direction to Tori on Papyrus, as he just gets O-Code immediately. While the fight is no gameplay, it's a hilarious and kinda sad twist, and the emotion present in Metaton only doing this to stall you any way you can to allow Alphas to get the rest of the underground to evacuate is pretty emotional. Number 23. Birdly 2 in the Snowgrave route. Fun 2, difficulty 2, personality 4, length 2. B tier. This is quite a somber fight. It ends relatively quickly, but oh boy does it have some emotional weight. The first, and only, likable character trait Birdly shows in this game is within this fight, in which he is genuinely concerned for his friend Noelle. It's actually really sweet how he is so worried about her well-being and whatever Chris has done to her. Although the first end, yeah, although this fight ends at about three terms, if I wish it was longer. I really wish this fight was longer. And I know it kind of breaks the rules, but maybe if Snowgrave costs 300 TP, or like every time Noelle tells you no, for like you have to regain the TP. It's like, and if that happened and Birdly like kept getting more desperate and aggressive as the fight continued on, 
it would honestly make this fight top 10 for me. But where it stands now, it's B tier because it's over in like 3 turns. Number 22, Lancer and Susie. Fun 3, Difficulty 2, Personality 4, Length 2, B tier. Right out front of Card Castle, Susie and Lancer square up on Ralsei and Chris, and this is a fun fight. The gameplay is cool, albeit very e easy, and Lancer realizing he likes Chris and Ralsei is very amusing, with Susie supposing they don't have to fight if Lancer doesn't wanna. A good boss fight going into the end of the game. Number 21, The Card King. Fun 3, Difficulty 3, Personality 2, Length 4, B tier. Speaking of the end of the game, the king of the king or card king or the chaos king or whatever whatever his name is comes in at number 21. A long final boss fight for Delta in chapter 1 that while it's pretty easy only being hard because of his length and I mean it's losing queen obviously queen is a very easy fight but like you know she does she does things a lot better than the king. This fight has unique attacks which I like. But really, that's all it does for me. I mean, the dialogue is good, and him talking about getting thrown back into the abyss like he's playing Hollow Knight or something, but it doesn't really talk about his character. The dialogue is, like, strong, but it doesn't say anything about his character, it just talks about his belief, which is why he's a 2, not a 1, but, like, still. It's, it's B-tier. Number 20. The Mad Dummy. Fun 2, Difficulty 3, Personality 3, Personality 4, Length 3, B tier. This malignant, malevolent, mad ventriloquist dummy coming in at around the midpoint of Undertale is a very fun fight. I like the phases he has with his dummies and the missiles and then the knife. I like this character a lot and I kinda wish we saw more of him, so I wait, like this fight could feel more emotional. Well, maybe not even emotional, it's like more justified. It's basically an out of nowhere fight, but uh, the end, the the music is a banger, and absolute coming in makes me like it more. Number nineteen, Spamton G Spamton. Fun two, difficulty three, personality four, length three, B tier. It's your number one rated salesman, circa nineteen ninety seven. Spamton G Spamton. This is a fun boss and a funny story. Wait, no, this is a fun boss, and here's a funny story. While I was getting the footage for this video, I did not die a single time, besides for this fight. First tried Sans, first tried Spam to Neo, first tried Jevil, first tried, tried Omega Flowey, first tried everything. But I died to Spam to G Spam to. I, I don't I don't know how I did it, I'm gonna be for real. That was a bit of a goof on my part, not gonna lie. Anyways, this is a cool fight, and it's... It's, there's not really much to it, it's just like putting Spampton out there as a character so you can be important later. It's a good B tier. 18. Birdly 2. Fun 3, difficulty 3, personality 3, length 3. B tier. Birdly 2 is a cool one. Is a cool in the well and Chris versus a rabbit goose fight. This battle is very fun and difficulty really comes from this one weird tornado attack that just destroys your entire team. I enjoyed the foreshadowing this fight of the text box literally just saying smells like frozen chicken. And overall it's a fun fight, with Birdie just being an idiot like usual, but it is a bit inferior to number 17. Birdly. A fun 3, difficulty 3, personality 3, length 3. Beat here. Now this is Birdly at his best. This wild goose chase has some really funny dialogue with Queen still being my favorite Deltarune character by a wide margin. Everyone involved doesn't really like Birdly, and Birdly is sparring with the team for his e-girlfriend, and it's just extraordinarily entertaining to see. Also, Smart Race is such a goddamn banger. Number 16, Metaton. Fun 4, Difficulty 0, Personality 4, Length 3, B tier. This fight is an absolute banger. Metal Crusher is a bop of a soundtrack, and Metaton's first appearance does not disappoint. This boss battle has some really funny bits with Alphys helping out the player, and this fight has the added benefit of having not one, but two personalities. So cranking up both of them on full display, and having just an endless supply of jokes. I was smiling the entire time during this fight. Amazing fight, and it rounds out BTR. Number 17. 
Number 15, Undyne. Fun 3, Difficulty 3, Personality 3, Length 4, A tier. Undyne has a fun fight with her giving you a spear to defend yourself. A wholly unique fighting style reserved only for Undyne's fights and her bit with Asriel. The spear attacks are cool and fun, and the, just fun to like switch up the gameplay a bit. Uh, beating her in the pacifist route also has a cool way of killing her. Well, not killing her, beating her, where you just run away like a little sissy baby until you get to high hot land. Also, the soundtrack is like basically in every single YouTube video. So, I mean, yeah, that's all I need to say about the soundtrack. It's, a, it's an absolute banger. Number 14, Sweet Cap Cakes. Fun 4, Difficulty 2, Personality 4, Length 3, A tier. Sweet Cat and Cakes is a really fun fight. Coming out of basically nowhere, this early Delta Nerd Chapter 2 fight is surprisingly enjoyable. The robot's jigs are top notch and the fight has a nice enough length to justify its quality. The robots are also very funny and some of the dialogue and text bosses are humorous as well, with my favorite definitely being Susie's Happy Feet Dumbass! Overall, fantastic fight with an incredibly memorable ending sequence. And number 13, The Great Papyrus. Fun 4, Difficulty 1, Personality 4, Length 4, A tier. The Great Papyrus is coming full throttle out, boys, one a doozy. As the final and only boss of Snowden, this lovable lonely skeleton is a fun fight. Papyrus will throw several bone-based battle attacks after you, and they are very charming, especially with his final special attack being a memorable highlight. It's a cool and easy fight that if you die too many times, he will literally just let you win if you feel like doing that. A tier. Number 12. Muffet. Fun 4, difficulty 3, personality 3, length 4. A tier. This scrumbidly umptious spider sneaks her way into the arena in the middle of Hotland, and this is a very, very cool fight. Muffet is an exclusively unique boss fight, being the only fight in the entire game, or Delta in so far, to feature the purple game mode. This fight is super tense slash and bad, it's very cool, and the chase sequences with their pet are exciting and blood pumping. It's not too difficult, but it'll probably cause a couple deaths in your first playthrough. Overall, a great boss fight. Number 11, Spamton Neo Neutral Slash Pacifist Route. Fun 4, Difficulty 3, Personality 4, Length 4, A tier. Your favorite Big Shot achieves his final form as a secret boss of Delta in Chapter 2, and it is one heck of a time. Spamton Neo recycles the Yellow Soul game mode from Metatony X's fight and doesn't work well here. The music is genuinely my favorite banger in the entirety of Undertale and Deltarune, even making, it my way on, making its way into my Spotify playlist. It's a decently long, somewhat challenging, and absolute blast to hear spam pits ramblings to heaven. A super unique and fun boss fight that I wish was a little bit harder. Number 10. Naps to Bluke. Fun 4, difficulty 1, personality 5, length 2, A tier. Here comes Naps to Bluke. I may be a little biased on this one, but I just can't help myself. Napster Blue comes in, god do I endure this blessed battle. Napster Blue's nefarious numbers and absolute joy, ghost fight goes so freaking hard, and Napster Blue's personality shines through with this one. And all of his attacks, and some of, one of his attacks literally just being him not feeling up to it. And the only gripe I have with this fight is that it is over far too quick. Obviously, I don't expect Naps Luke to have a difficult fight, but I just wish the fight lasted longer. I love this fight. I love Naps Luke. Number 9. Undyne the Undying. Fun 4, difficulty 4, personality 4, length 4. A tier. Now this is a fight. Undyne the Undying delivers on all fronts. This is the culmination of the emotion of the genocide route. The true hero of the story stands between you and the absolute. She, with the power of everyone, those living and those fallen, is determined to kill you. Some of the attacks in this fight are very, very fast, and the red, the red soul parts are probably the hardest bits, having to weave between all of her spears. 
A fun and challenging and a long fight that delivers harder than literally any battle in all of Undertale before. Number 8. Azrael Dreamer. Fun 5, Difficulty 2, Personality 4, Length 5. A tier. Honestly, a damn near perfect finale. Hopes and Dreams is a masterpiece of the song, and the fight is not only beautiful, but the character growth of Azrael during the length of the fight is so good. Freeing your souls from Azrael's control and then saving him is just so climactic and beautiful. One of the most entertaining fights in either gameplay-wise and just quality, like, visually-wise. Like, have you seen that background? It is amazing. Only thing keeping this fight down is I wish we saw more of, like, the nice version of Azrael. And obviously there's checkpoints, so it's not, like, super hard. Like, I expect, like, when he does, like, the crazy shit to be revived, but, like, most of the time, like, come on. Number 7, Asgore. Fun 4, Difficulty 3, Personality 4, Length 4, S tier. Asgore is an amazing fight. Honestly, words can't really describe how I feel in this fight. The music really sells the emotion here, but yeah, this is just a fantastic battle. Suddenly my footage for this one is corrupted, so credit to Fazgore for footage. The animation of his destruction of the mercy button is just crazy and it really makes you feel like this is going to be a life or death battle. This fight I believe exemplifies the strength of Undertale, when it doesn't use its emotion it doesn't use words to display the emotion, but it, it uses via words and the character. It's just a near perfect final boss. Number six Jevil. Mischief 4, Calamity 5, Kookiness 4, and the absolute size of this lab 4. S tier. This is janky Jester Jevil's crazy. Like Dave levels of crazy. He believes he is free in his little cell and he goes all out in his ons onslaught. This fight probably took me the second longest of any fight to beat for the first time, second only to Sans. And it obviously was easier the second time playing it, but oh wow, the game me a run for my money. This gesture will pull out all the stops in this decently fun, charming secret boss fight, and dude, does the world's revolving go so hard. Number 5. Spamton Neo Snowgrave. Big Shot 4. Deals 5. 97 Charm 4. Chromer 4. S tier. This sleek Snowgrave Spamton salesman does everything he can to keep his status as a big shot, and it shows. This ranking does have one caveat, however, and is that, and is pretty unique to this fight in that if this is your first time fighting this boss, like he didn't do the secret boss fight before he did the Snowgrave route, then it's a five in difficulty. Like that's that's how I experienced it for the first time, and it was really fun to like not know what was coming next and take like a day to beat the boss fight. But if you've already if you already did it on the pacifist route, then it's it's an easy fight. You're probably gonna first try it. But that being said, this fight is a really funny neck yeah, climactic fight. And the bit with like calling people's names at the end and saying to me like, You're really trying to use her is that's just so great. It's incredible. Number four. Metaton EX. Fun 5, Difficulty 3, Personality 5, Length 4, S tier. Oh yes! Metaton EX is a thoroughly enjoyable fight. Like seriously, I had a smile on my face the entire time of playing it, even though I've played the, seen this game many a times. Not to mention Death by Glamour is an absolutely, unbelievably hard track. Metaton EX's boss fight goes so good, and it is this indescribable feeling of how happy this fight makes me. The song makes the crowd and the audience want to bust a move, and oh boy did I have a smile on my face the whole time. Number 3. Queen. Fun 5, Difficulty 2, Personality 5, Length 5. S tier. Queen's fight is really fantastic. 
and the two phases are really something special. The first phase is a traditional fight having a free birdly over a decent dura duration. Attack of the Killer Queen is a really fun soundtrack, and the attacks are also really unique. Then phase 2 hits, and all the friends who made it along the way get ready to square up and have one giant robot mech long punch out battle with the Killer Queen herself. It's a super enjoyable and amazing fight to experience for the first time. Number 2, Omega Flowey. Fun 5, Difficulty 2, Personality 5, Length 5, S tier. This fight is off the rails berserk. Flowey really went all the way off the deep end of this one. Absorbing the 6 human souls and being the final boss in the neutral route, it is a great send off for people in the neutral route. This is probably the longest fight in any of the games, and it does have checkpoints to lower the difficulty a bit, but it doesn't stop the madness from just carrying it. The bombs with Flowey's face, the finger guns, the weird plant monsters, and everything else are just so crazy, and your best nightmare is an absolute banger of a track. After freeing the souls, the crescendo of the music is beautiful, and the final gauntlet of easier attacks is incredibly cool. Number 1, Sans. Fun 5, Difficulty 5, Personality 5, Length 5, S tier. The Judge of the Underground delivers one final sentence. All of the actions up until this point place one final comeuppance in this extraordinarily hard and unique boss fight. Two phases, 12 attacks each, and almost every single attack is going to require memorization, and a shit ton of skill. Megalovania is one of the best video game soundtracks of all time, and its implementation in this fight is impeccable. Sans motherfucking Undertale, dude. 